What's up, YouTube? First of all, happy 2022. I wish you guys all the best, you, your family, your friends, and in the end, I hope this is an amazing year for all of us. That being said, I'm preparing 11 predictions for 2022. Um, of course, this video is about having fun. Uh, a couple of those predictions, I'm going a little bit too far, but you guys know this is part of the deal. This is part of uh, doing this type of video. So if in the end you end up enjoying this, this video, feel free to leave a like. means a lot to me and it's the best way to support my work. Apart from that, a lot of viewers are not even subscribers to my channel. I don't know the reason. You can change that and I will be very thankful for that. So moving on and let's start with the disclaimer. It will be a short one, but a very important one. No financial advice. Uh, prices are pop can eventually, can eventually be wrong at the time you see this video. On the description, you can find a way affiliate link that supports the channel. English is not my main language, any types of mispronunciations, I'm sorry for that. So let's start with the first one. And the first one I would say is not a super risky prediction. PSA and BGS will have a bulk ship service again. Nathan already expresses his desire to open shipping levels. Uh, BGS is a different case since there is almost zero communication by them. The backlog is probably still giant, but both companies have been putting a lot of work on that front. PSA at least because we know that that's public, have been hiring a lot of new people in a crazy pace and in my view doing an amazing job on that front. So big shout out for PSA for that. For me, one of the reasons uh, to have a down bearish market is actually the fact that grading ended up becoming too expensive. If this prediction is correct, I also believe the market will show strong signs on that front. SGC already offers a ship option uh, around $30 and I can see that price going down because imagine if PGS or PSA uh, end up coming with a $20 service, of course, uh, SEC will have to adapt and the uh, competition is better for um, for us, basically. So let's move on into the, the second prediction. In this case, uh, this is a risky one. A soccer card will sell for over 1.5 million. This one, I think, again, is quite risky. Soccer is still waiting for the first million dollar card and I'm already going with 1.5. So of course, I'm taking a big gamble on this one. I expect a lot of great things for soccer this year. International explosion, reality being stronger in key players, World Cup uh, uh, explosion, gold golden TV show featuring a lot of soccer and many other factors. If you follow my content, you guys already know my opinion about the soccer card market. I'm very bullish. And um, yeah, I believe this year will be quite, quite amazing. What card will be? If I had to guess, I would say Pelé, Olifa Bologet. Can be other rare Pelé, rookie Pelé. Uh, but players like Cristiano Ronaldo, Messi, Maradona, I believe they have a nice uh, uh, shot at that. But again, I, I, I would still would go with Pelé. On the ultra-modern front, maybe some uh, super refractor Mbappé, Aland uh, are also a good option. Again, if I had to guess, I would go with Pelé. And, the, and that's actually related with my... my my next pick, a Messi card will sell for over 500k and this market will recover. I'm not saying the market will go back to all time highs because that's super difficult to predict, but I still believe, and that's again another difficult prediction, but I still believe the market will recover. The reason I'm saying uh, a card will go for over 500k is I tend to believe the PSA 10 for Messi Mega Crack 7 on Bs is just too low for a player that has so, so much demand. And if... Uh, if the market keeps growing, and I believe will be the case, that cars can, can only, at least in my view, show good signs. The correction on Messi cars is big, and we are in certain rookies, not all of not all rookies, but in certain rookies reaching prices like the pre-boom on his market. You guys remember January, February, March, again, around those months, the market ended up going so crazy last year that uh, Messi, the Messi uh, rookie market explosion was something uh, basically... Uh, crazy actually and uh, of course we are still facing a big correction i believe too long if you ask me that being said i i'm still a big believer on the messy market one of the reasons i believe the messy market is down is people are quite afraid of the backlog and playing a wait and see game but when the backlog is cleared and i tend to believe certain messy cards uh, stickers are still super super difficult to find super scarce in the market um, i can see the market showing strong signs on that front Messi, in my view, is one of the faces in the hobby, one of the goats, for a lot of people the goat, and I'm biased since I have a lot of money in Messi cards. But I do not see a world where the soccer card market keeps growing and Messi cards do not follow the same trend. So this is just my opinion about the Messi market. I'm very bullish on the Messi market. I'm, I'm still up quite a lot on the Messi market because I started collecting uh, a couple of years ago. That being said, even if you guys started one year ago, 
again, not cannot predict if the cards will go for all time highs, but I tend to believe the market will recover um, very well when the backlog is clear, uh, because that's the timeline I'm, I'm expecting. Number four, SEC will become the second most important grading company in soccer. If you collect soccer, you know uh, CS, uh, SEC is one of the best companies in terms of research uh, slash labeling. They grade very tough for sure. No, don't think they are soft by any means. I actually believe they are quite harsher than, uh, than Beckett, for example. But I would say that's a good thing in the long run. Apart from that... Um, uh, apart from that, they are grading a lot of stuff and keeping low prices in such a weird time right now for the grading game. Sure, you can uh, already make an argument they are super close to the second spot, or maybe already in the second spot, but I believe they will consolidate that position even more. In other markets, I know BGS is quite stronger than SEC, basketball, Pokemon are, are two good, good examples, and again, even, uh, even in soccer, you can still make an argument that BGS is in, in the second spot, but soccer is still a relative new market and apart from that uh, PS and apart from PSA being the number one um, I think the number two is still open for grabs and uh, if I had to bet in SEC and Beckett I would go for SEC because they are doing a lot of things in an amazing way and Beckett not that much and again I think this is quite logical uh, but by the way if Beckett's if Beckett end up getting uh, again how can I say this if Beckett end up uh, uh, opening bulk again and uh, start communicating with us maybe Beckett will be in the second spot because the Beckett brand is is quite quite strong and I would be be happy with that don't, don't think I I hate Beckett by any means I actually have uh, most of my holy grail cars in in Beckett slabs at this point so I I, I at least I, I want to believe Beckett will make a, a comeback because I have in, 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 at least for me will, will be good. But that being said, if I had to, to put money right now, I would say SEC will be uh, the number two uh, in terms of um, grading soccer cards. So before I go into the, the next uh, prediction, let me say one thing. Uh, Q, Q&A 31 is live on Patreon. Uh, joining Patreon is quite important if you want to support the channel and if you want and if you want to get exclusive content. Joining the Patreon, you you get access to a YouTube video on Wednesday and extra audio on pa, po, extra audio slash podcast if you want to call that a podcast on Saturday. Anyone joining the Patreon will be able to ask me questions. In the last couple of months, I ended up answering more than 200 questions, which is quite quite impressive. You will automatically have access to 31 exclusive videos plus 20 six audios at this at the point you see this video probably more i would say so guys if you can support me on patreon and i think this is quite important to to say all the time don't feel bad for that you should always expect free content on youtube but the reality is i will make more content for patreon going forward i already make a lot of content for for, for patreon and if you want to learn about the soccer card market i think my patreon is an amazing place to be in if you can support me, don't think, don't, don't, don't take that personally. I'm, I don't take that personally. Better saying, and in the end, you should always expect free content on YouTube. That being said, if you can support me on Patreon, you can still join the Discord server. It's totally free. Uh, there is a link for uh, actually for for Patreon and for uh, for Discord on, on the description. We are more than 300 members on on the on the Discord server which is quite crazy to, to think about and we are growing quite fast every day. So link below the video, uh, that Discord, I focus a little bit more on pre-modern, but even vintage, ultra modern, all of those, uh, you, you can talk there and I hope to see you guys there. And by the way, if you want to, to ask me a question, if you want to interact with me, I'm online a lot of times on, on Patreon debating certain topics, so you can, you can find me there. Check both links on the description. Number five, consolidation in the space. We saw this year in a major. We saw this in a major way last year, and I don't think 20, 2022 will be different. Fanatics probably will make some big moves. Uh, there is a lot of rumors around that. Tops and upper deck are probably the most likely targets for them. But even Panini, I would say there is a strong possibility. I don't think is that crazy. I doubt, but I don't think is that crazy. Better saying. Even auction houses, I can see consolidation in that space since there is too many at this point. And look, you can tell me, yeah, but that's not a risky take by any means. We know consolidation is, is going on in the hobby. 
Um, so, okay, let's take a gamble. I believe SEC or BGS will eventually get bought or connected to other companies slash big investors. Can I tell you for sure this will be true? Of course not. This is just a fun prediction. But uh, I will not be surprised if Beckett ends up getting bought by PSA or even other grading company that I'm not aware. Um, and we'll see. Again, this is uh, a crazy prediction, but I believe it's a lot of fun. Number six, PSA will open a grading office in Europe or at least make it, ish, make it official. I think this is a risky one and I honestly believe I will fail on this one in particular. Sure, there is a lot of rumors, but not, nothing official yet. The reason I say this is quite risky is actually simple. Uh, PSA have, done, have, have to deal with a lot of problems until they really think about going to a different regions like Europe. And that can take longer than we expect. So I know that they, they, they are already opening a new office in, in America. They are opening a new office or at least start grading in, in Japan. And those are all great things. But uh, those things can take a while. So maybe Europe next year. I'm being too positive, basically. And I actually believe I will fail this one. But I will be super happy if this one ended up becoming reality. I believe this will be a thing for sure. I just don't know if one year is enough. Moving on at number seven, TCGs are undervalued and we'll see major moves. I know, I know, you do not care about TCGs. Guess what? I love them, so it is what it is. Pokemon had a crazy explosion, had a crazy explosion in the last two years, but games like MTG, Yu-Gi-Oh! and Yu-Gi-Oh! also saw a crazy, crazy growth. When you compare TCGs with sports, there is way more money in sports and I think the gap can actually close quite a lot. This uh, is more a long-term prediction, but I expect a strong year for TCGs. Even that TCGs, like uh, with historic relevance, for example, Harry Potter 2001, which was made by Wizards of the Coast, which end up creating the first the, the first sets for Pokemon and of course still creates Magic the Gathering or even a, a, a set, a product like Mid Alert 95 can see a dramatic growth. Still super strong and relevant brands and TCGs in general, they feel undervalued for me. I tend to talk a, a lot about this on my Patreon side. Uh, I will not go very deep on, on that. But I believe we live in a different world and pop culture, strong brands, internet products are relating more uh, with kids than uh, sports. Um, so this is for me, not only this is, even cards related with pop culture, streamers on Twitch, uh, YouTubers, uh, if they eventually get, get cards, I think th those segments that can grow, can actually have a crazy growth. This topic is quite complex and I can make a lot of, a lot of videos on this one. I have experience in both worlds, that's why I'm sharing this. So at number eight, at number eight, a couple of narratives will get stronger and stronger. I believe we saw the power of narratives in the in in the market last year. Not only in soccer, to be fair, but we are very uh, we are a very young hobby, and the only constant is change. Okay, so this is something to think about. Look, can I tell you for sure what what will happen in the next month? No. But I have no doubt that something will change because that's the only constant in the market. I talked a couple uh, in a couple of videos about licensed product and non-licensed product, and I see more people talking about that every day at this point. You can agree or disagree, which is totally fine. But I have, if I had to guess, this will be a major topic in 2022. Um, for people that think I don't like non-licensed non cards, that's of course uh, not true at all. I just in pre-modern, in particular, I prefer licensed product for a, a lot of reasons. I can make a video alone on that. I believe actually I already made a video alone on that. But uh, I understand that vintage cannot get... Uh, there is not a lot of licensed product in vintage and that's fine. Those cars are still historic and should demand a premium even if those cars are not non-licensed. For pre-modern, I have, I would say, a different opinion, basically. I also expect different narratives getting stronger. Uh, those will be a little bit more fun. We already saw a lot of talk about inserts, uh, subsets, subbrands, um, what are the PMGs of soccer. Of course, this is just for fun. And in pre-modern, ultra-modern era is where I can see major moves on that front. The reason I'm saying this is I get a lot of questions related with inserts for Messi, for Cristiano Ronaldo. And I see more people talking about this 
every day. Look, I actually end up doing a couple of polls on my Instagram channel, uh, in this case profile, and I ask people what to, what uh, is the, the PMGs of soccer. Some people think it's the Mega Cracks uh, inserts for Lionel Messi, for Cristiano Ronaldo. Some people think it's Top Scrum. Some, pe some people think it's 2014 Prism. Uh, but again, uh, even if right now we, we don't have a clear winner on that front, or maybe all of those will be winners because that's another strong possibility, I believe talk around inserts, around sub-runs, subsets will become even more strong uh, next this year in this case. So new fakes will be greater. That's my uh, prediction number nine. This is the only. Uh, this is the one. Uh, I hope I'm completely wrong. The reason I believe this will be the case, and let me say this: last year we saw the first major problem with fakes. BGS created a crazy amount of fake Ronaldo rookie stickers, which again ended up crashing his market quite a lot, especially on BGS levels. But even across the board, I would say the market ended up suffering a little bit with that. Sadly, I've been seeing a lot of raw fakes on the market. I'm not talking about this card in particular, I'm talking about a lot of big cards Messi Mundi Chrome, Messi Avon Bs, Cristiano Ronaldo Mega Cracks. Uh, if you guys go to eBay Italy, if you guys go to even eBay in, in America, you guys can find a lot of uh, fakes. Uh, they put fax mill, they put reprint, whatever the, the, the word they put. But the reality is some people will uh, try to, to scam other people or even try to grade those cards. And look, uh, one year ago, I would say no way BGS will grade fake Christian Ronalds. Uh, the reality is they end up grading a lot of those. I know people will put BGS like the easy target for this. And maybe that's the case. By the way, I hope be back at wake ups basically uh, but even PSA and SGC need to be extra careful on this front the sensor market is still so new I'm not sure if those grading companies probably PSA uh, now is is, is is the best one but SGC I'm not, I'm not sure if they have a lot of people that really understand soccer and I think that they need to invest on that front but uh, no, no, our market is very new so it's, it's even difficult to judge those guys just because of that and fakes, apart from that, are getting better. So even if you understand uh, a lot about soccer, uh, about uh, uh, print quality, etc., those fakes are getting really good. So they, those companies need to be extra careful. And I'm not, I'm not sure if they, they are on, on the spot that I trust, they, they know what they are doing. I hope I'm totally wrong, by the way. Of course... If I had to guess, maybe BGS will be the one. PSA seems a little bit more careful with this type of stuff. SGC the same. Um, but this is the only thing that scares me a lot in the soccer card market. When people ask me what can crush the market, I believe great, uh, I believe fakes is, is, is the thing that we need to be very afraid. Number 10. Premier League Legends will start to get a premium. Again, another trend slash narrative that have been gaining a lot of power, a lot of steam. This is a topic that I've been seeing more and more lately, okay? Uh, there is strong reason to believe in this narrative, if you ask me. You can disagree. I will share with you why I agree. Premier League Legends... Um, First of all, Premier League is the best league in the world. No doubt about that, if you ask me. Second, if you believe in the soccer growing international, Premier League players are probably special for a lot of reasons. Uh, let's use Asia as an example. Um, Premier League is by far the key league, talking about inter international leagues on Asia. And um, you guys see, even on the N NBA market, how powerful, uh, how powerful Asian collectors can be. I was talking about with a, a couple of uh, guys on, on Discord that are actually agents, and they, they told me, you know what, my idol was Frank Lampard, was Steven Gerrard, was Thierry Henry. And uh, if that ended up becoming even, uh, if that market ends up growing and that narrative gets stronger, of course, we will see eventually a premium on certain players from Premier League. Um, think about Spain, for example. Of course, La Liga is the most popular league in Spain. But after that is Premier League, and you can apply this logic to a lot of countries. So Premier League is in a different level when you compare with any other league, and I believe the market will uh, reflect that. And uh, this is super important also. Look, I believe the soccer card market is very influenced by Americans at this point. But if I had to guess the, the second strongest force in the hobby, I would say it's probably the United Kingdom. So, of, And of course, those guys will relate a lot with Premier League legends for, for obvious reasons. 
That being said, will uh, all of this translate into more, uh, more money into the hobby for Premier League legends? Look, maybe, maybe not. It's difficult to predict. I believe in this a lot, but do your own research. So some people tend to, to think just because I'm saying this, this will be true. It's not the case at all. It's something I believe, and I'm investing in, in Premier League players, um, I would say quite heavily, being, being honest. But again, can I be wrong? Of course, do your own research. Me, personally, I believe quite a lot. Number 11. This is the the most important one, I would say. Of course, I'm joking, but uh, I will be at uh, 3K subscribers at the end of next year. Probably crazy prediction, honestly, because I've been on the way, the 1K reach uh, for a long time. I'm not even 1.5K yet. I actually got uh, 1K very fast, but now it's going a little bit slower. Probably there is a lot of people leaving the hobby. We are facing a down market. Could be a lot of reasons, or maybe my content is not uh, that good as it was when I started. Could be a lot of reasons. I trust on my work ethic and I know I'm doing content for a sport with crazy potential. We'll see. Again, if I had to put money, will I say that I, I will be at 3k? Probably not. But again, uh, I hope I'm, I'm correct. And by the way, this is the only thing I tend to say this all the time. You can help me. If you are not a subscriber, you can do it right now. So guys, conclusion is always the same. Collect things you love. Price, price is what you pay. Value is what you get. Leave a like to this video. I will finish the video the way I started. Happy new uh, year. I hope you guys have an amazing year. You, your family, your friends. And see you guys tomorrow. Have a nice day.